Okay, hey, hey everyone. Um, so today we're just gonna go, go over a few things that have been going on in the world of OpenStack Helm over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, so I, I'm Pete, I currently act as a project team lead for, for OSH. And up here with me is uh, Steve, who is one of our primary contributors on the project and is responsible for a huge number of the reviews we have. So just to sort of re recap what, what o OpenStack Helm is all about, um, our official mission is to provide a collection of Helm charts that simply, resiliently, and flexibly deploy discrete OpenStack and related services on Kubernetes. And when we say related services, we mean effectively everything from very, very basic supporting infrastructure, things like uh, MariahDB, uh, RabbitMQ, uh, through to other things like Ceph, and then also uh, uh, an extensive logging, monitoring, and alerting uh, stack as well um, to to provide some operator value. And our sort of unofficial mission statement is to is to try and be boring in that we want to maintain stability, uh, upgradability, and usability for all of our charts and services. Um, the project started in late 2016 as a POC. Uh, in July 2017, moved into OpenStack Infra, becoming an official project later that year. And um, alongside this, uh, the Airship project um, came, came along and was spawned as a top-level incubator project in uh, May 2018, and uh, just this week had its first uh, 1.0 release. Uh, so across uh, various projects, um, we are quite heavy users of the uh, Loki or the lightweight OCI uh, container images project, uh, which is another OpenStack project for building um, Docker images containing OpenStack services. Uh, OpenStack Helm is also consumed quite extensively by um, Airship, which uh, leverages quite a lot of our charts for the deployment outside of a strictly OpenStack context and providing some authentication and storage for them, as well as using the, the Helm Toolkit, which is a, a reusable library for uh, a lot of their, their charts. And additionally, we collaborate quite extensively on some of the gating and uh, checking that we do in Zool. Uh, Starling, Starling X um, is another top-level incubator project uh, under the, the OpenStack Foundation, which is uh, migrating uh, to use uh, OpenStack Helm for their uh, OpenStack deployment and I believe the 2.0 release. And they're primarily using some CentOS-based images, which uh, they've been working with sort of very, very quietly, but by all accounts quite successfully um, with. And in, on top of that, um, there is also some uh, work, good work from the guys over at uh, Tungsten Fabric, uh, who are currently running a fork of many of um, our charts, uh, although that work has now begun to merge this. Uh, the required changes uh, for their SDN layer upstream. I think there's also some conversations going on about pulling in other more advanced SDNs like Sonar and other things over, over the coming releases. Um, kind of have split the project out into several repos uh, to get the con various concerns within them clearly identified and demarcated. So we have OpenStack Helm, which has the, the charts for OpenStack services, OpenStack uh, Helm Infra, which does all the supporting services that you need to bring up OpenStack. And because we regard logging, monitoring, and alerting as a critical part of any production deployment, it also contains the LMA stack. Uh, Add-ons, which has some value add services, things like Artifactory for image distribution, Jenkins for, for running on-premise CI, um, and uh, an images repo, which uh, was really, uh, has, has really come on leaps and bounds. Um, this, this release, uh, JP and some of the other people from SUSE who are here today really helped get that project off the ground, and we're now publishing images from there, which is a really awesome step forward um, for us. And we've got a, a docs repo, which is still in very early stages uh, there where we're trying to collect together the documentation across the project. And I don't know if you want to talk about some of the, the Stein cycle features that we, we worked on. Sure. Uh, some, one of the big things uh, I've been working on the last few months and others have been working on as well. Uh, back in September, when we were here the last time at the PTG, we talked about revisiting the jobs that we execute uh, for OpenStack Helm because we had a myriad of multi-node jobs that were usually taking two to three hours to run and it wasn't uncommon to see timeouts uh, 
just due to the amount of charts that we were trying to throw at the infrastructure um, in Stein. They, they were fairly unfocused as well. Yeah. If you made a, a change to, uh, say, Mistral, we were doing really extensive testing of Keystone and all sorts of other things that were sort of completely unrelated. Yeah, we, we've still got a way to go there, but now OpenStack Helm, the jobs that execute uh, are check jobs and the gates are primarily single node jobs. We've transitioned all of the, the majority of the multi-node jobs to periodic jobs. Uh, that was discussed at the PTG. Um, you wanna talk about concentration on stability? Yeah, so again, I mean, this, this sort of tie, ties in quite a lot of the, the other work we've been doing, which we still need to, to get formalized in our, in our gating environment, is doing uh, a lot of resiliency testing. And there we found uh, some quite, quite significant weaknesses in things like our, our RabbitMQ management and, uh, and a few other aspects that we are closing the gaps on in order to enable us to, to operate uh, not only in a theoretically high availability in way, but one that actually is, is really resilient. And I think if any of you guys were at the talk that um, I, I was involved in this morning where we talked about some of the, the challenges that have been faced with running infrastructure like OpenStack Helm uh, and the, the interconnections there uh, that, that Kubernetes doesn't react terribly well with, there's been, there's been a focus on improving that. Um, the, other, the other sort of thing that I think is really worth calling out as well is uh, moving to allow credential rotation for all components because up until fairly recently there were some fairly fairly critical things like the RabbitMQ uh, administrator password and uh, our Galera uh, root, root password that, that we couldn't rotate easily so we now do that and I think Steve built some gates as well that allow us to, to validate that as well. And then the, the, the other aspects we have is uh, artifact publishing for images, uh, again, um, and the, an implemented spec for uh, multiple container distro support, which we've started to see some really nice progress on um, with the first, the first uh, checks coming in for, for testing OpenSUSE for Keystone. And we also have a whole series of overrides that have been provided for other services that I hope over the next uh, couple of weeks we can start to see validated upstream and, and really start to, start to um, close in on something we've been saying for a long time, which is that we are agnostic towards our container distro and actually prove and validate that. Um, We've also got a, a spec for image registry authentication support, um, which has been a gap we have had for, for quite some time. And I think um, a lot of the, the people, uh, Wind River and Intel, are, are looking to work on that over the, over the next week or, or two, which will, be, which will be really nice to see. Um, the, other, the other things that we've had, had come in is um, the expansion of our, our daemon set overrides uh, support, which allow us to uh, support uh, con pods which have multiple containers. Most notably, this um, fixes uh, an issue that sort of crept, crept by us that uh, our Nova compute uh, deployments couldn't, couldn't really be uh, host specific. And again, this was something that uh, the guys at Starling X uh, so sorted out, uh, as well as restoring cold migration support. Um, and allowing be better management of RBD pool for libvirt images. Cool. Uh, in the telemetry space, we, uh, we worked with the team that was working on the Minaska Helm charts uh, to get their work merged into OpenStack Helm add-ons. Uh, the goal for that is going to be getting the Minaska Helm chart and the dependencies that are defined in that chart to be able to consume the other OpenStack Helm and OpenStack Helm infra charts as part of that chart, as well as try to um, get the Minaska chart to match and adhere to some of the uh, standards and chart structure that we've got in the other, the other charts. But it was really awesome to see that to get merged in. Uh, also, we added the Panko and the A charts. Uh, that was important because we also, uh, there was some work done to restore Solometer to an operable state uh, in OpenStack Helm. Uh, it had been in a sorry state for a while, and it was really great to see someone kind of come back and give it some love and attention and get it functional again. Um, also, there were some enhancements done to the Naki chart to now uh, delete the resources via cron job. And I think the one, the one thing we really still really need to close there is uh, make sure we don't regress there and actually, actually get some gating around that. Okay. 
So um, current, currently, so that the, I'd say the, the primary things that are, are, are moving right now is a you know getting getting this multiple distribution support in the chart, and um, you know where where Suzo are making some really good strides there. And it would be nice to see sort of us us start looking at supporting things like like CentOS as well um, in order to in order to really round round that out. Um, images, you know, the the situation is looking really good there now for, for building. I think we need to do a better job of how we cache them so that we can start speeding up our gates a bit more and then also promoting them so that as new images are built, we can really be quite explicit about which versions have been tested and validated with the charts. And this ties into uh, improving our gating where I think in the past we tended to have very, very slow and cumbersome gates that were quite quite thorough to a certain extent. And we've now moved to, to very fast gates that probably let a little bit more through than they should. And so we need to do a bit of job of sort of scoping those appropriately and um, targeting targeting kind of what we want. And I think in 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 the future, um, you know, in some some of the stuff I think we should really hopefully try and uh, hammer out in the, the PTG coming up at the end of the week is potentially revisiting our 1.0 release spec because it's kind of been pretty old in the tooth at this point and we've, you know, I think, I think holding our hands up, we've really kind of failed to deliver on it. And it's, it's at a point now where there are many more people involved in the community and it makes more sense for us to actually revisit and say, does this thing make sense and get, get something that is an achievable target that we can all get behind. And the, the other thing I, I'd like to see as well is a start to implementing things like Helm unit test so we can uh, start validating things like Helm toolkit much more thoroughly and formally than we have, which will catch regressions that we saw in things like the, the daemon set overrides as Helm changed its, the way that the merge function worked with 2.13. Uh, and also some uh, improvements for bring your own Kubernetes. Um, we, we recently switched to using Minikube um, to bring up our gates, but we've never fully documented that. And additionally, I think you know, quite, quite a few other people would like to see documentation around how to deploy OpenStack Helm on top of things like a Kubernetes cluster provisioned via Airship, one provisioned via KubeSpray, and potentially sort of slightly more esoteric things for testing environments on top of things like AKS and, and other things. And additionally, um, I think it would be great if we could start formalizing um, and validating uh, Bring Your Own Ceph, because I know we have multiple operators uh, who are using OpenStack Helm with external Ceph clusters. And probably it makes sense to, to start work on uh, bringing Brook into, into our gating environment so we can just use that as an, an example case of validating it. And then finally, I think some validation around uh, the values ordering spec. So along with unit testing, we can we can sort of actually hone in on that and may enforce it as a standard. Okay. So we're, we're trying to get better at uh, being being out out and about because uh, I think I think typically in the past we've been on IRC quite a lot. Uh, but, but have failed to use the mailing list quite as effectively as we have, which we're, we're, we're sort of making a really concerted effort to change and be more responsive there. We also hold uh, meetings every Tuesday at 3 p.m. on, on IRC, uh, UTC, and have just recently started holding office hours uh, every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Uh, on IRC um, in OpenStack Helm's channel on Freenode. I think the m weekly meeting channel is meeting four. I think it's wrong in there. Oh, oops. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's meeting, meeting four. <laughs> this is what happens when you copy and paste slides. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and also the mailing list has changed since I duplicated this slide. Um, and one, one of the things we're, we're trying to get out of the office hours is more uh, having, having a more defined time that we can have some cores available and other people who are sort of familiar with the project. So if you have any questions, you know, sort of no matter how arbitrary or, or esoteric, you know, please, please feel free to, to chime up there and, and we can try and address them there. Because I know that sometimes during our defined meetings um, that it can, be, it can be quite hard to for bring up those topics. 
And then I think we also have a project onboarding session yep. in half an hour in the room next door. So if, if anyone here would like to sort of find out how to get involved in the project and, and what, how we tend to operate, it'd be great to come along to that session. But th thanks for coming. And any, any questions? Okay, so, so just to reiterate that question, so the, we, we currently have one tagged release in, in OpenStack Helm of 010, um, and the question was, is that the release to use? And, and sorry, I'll rephrase it slightly. Is that a release to use? And if not, which is the release to use? That's, that's a horrible question because it's, it's so pertinent. Um, Zero, zero, 010 zero represents OpenStack Helm at around about the time that it changed from being an experiment into a, a real thing. So at this point, it is probably two years behind where we are at the moment. So I would strongly recommend not using it. Um, we support master as of as of today, and we also make a informal commitment to support any recent version of master to any other recent version of master. There, there are multiple organisations using OpenStack Helm that test and validate that um, pretty pretty thoroughly on a regular basis. There has been an intent to have a a release, which I think. Um, you know, people, multiple people in this room from Brandon right at the back, JP and uh, Jayanne here, have, have really wanted it for a long time. And I think it's, it's well beyond the time we should have had that release. And it relates to why at the PTG we need to reevaluate that spec and criteria for releasing so that we can actually get something out the door that we can properly EMR and validate. So, so the, the question was, are, are we releasing as part of the standard OpenStack release cadence and structure? Um, no. We're, we're not doing that for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, because we are not an OpenStack project as such, we are an OpenStack deployment and management project, I think that the typical release structure doesn't fit these things quite as well because by definition, we always are going to be trailing some of these other projects. You know, it may only be by a couple of weeks, but we're never going to be able to release concurrently with them with a high degree of confidence that we can absorb all of those new features. And also the charts we have support more than a single version of OpenStack. So I think it would be rather misleading for us to say, hey, we have got the train release of OpenStack Helm, and the train release of OpenStack Helm works with Okata to Queens. <laughs> you know, it's a, it would be a very confusing thing. Um, right, oh. Sorry to step there. Um, I just want to add something extra on that conversation. I believe that um, the release model can be changed at any time. And there are different release models that are more appropriate for OpenStack Helm. Yeah. And I think this is, this is a conversation that we need, we need to have evolving because Loki and other things have very similar requirements. But I'm sorry, I will be outside if you, if you want to ask any more questions. But thanks, everyone.